All right, in this video, we are going to redesign our nav bar to have a proper nav for logged in users or guest users, and also add the log out functionality. At the moment, even though we are logged in, we still see a login and register. So we need to hide these links if the user is logged in and show the proper links, for example, user dashboard link and the logout link. So let's go to our layout template and we need to show this div only to the guest user. So we can wrap it with a guest directive. So of course now we don't see those links. Now we want to create an auth directive and create the user dashboard menu. And I'm going to use Alpine.js for that because I want to have a drop down menu and it's quite easy to use Alpine.js. Let's create the markup first. I'm going to have a div here and apply some classes. So this div is going to be relative and display grid and place items center. And I'm going to create some comments here. So this is going to be drop down menu button. So we will have a button. I'm going to set the type to button and also I have a class here that is called round BTN. Now inside this button I want to have an image and for the image I'm going to use this lorem pixum which is just a random image and we can just copy this link and paste it for the source. All right so let's go back to our website this is the image we have and when we click on it we have a ring this is just my CSS classes and I should have done this in the first video I will put all of these CSS classes in a GitHub link and I will add it to all the videos so you can also download it if you want. So that is our button and then we want the drop down menu itself. So I'm going to create a div here and add some classes again. So some background and shadow and the position for this one is going to be absolute and relative to this div. Top 10 from the right it's going to be zero and I'm going to make rounded corners and overflow hidden font light. Then I want to have a P tag with this class username from that CSS file. I want to show the user's username and we will talk about this in a moment. Then we want to have an A tag that would go to the user's dashboard for now we don't have that view and some classes here and a text that says dashboard. All right, so this is our menu. Now we want to hide this menu and show it when the user clicks on this button. So let's go to Alpine.js website, click get started. First, we need to add the script. So let's just copy this and go to the head tag and just paste it somewhere in the head tag. So that is adding Alpine.js to our project. Now the section that needs some functionality with JavaScript is this div. So our menu. So with Alpine.js, if we want to add some functionality to an element and its children, we need to add the X data to the parent first. This X data is basically creating our variables. And we want to create an object here with a key. I'm going to call it open. And the value for this one is going to be false. Now we want to hide this drop down menu. So for that, we have an X show which is again part of Alpine.js and this X show takes a Boolean. So we can just pass our open variable and it is false. That means we will not see this one. So if we go back to our project, the menu is gone. So we want to toggle this show when we click on this button. So we can attach a click attribute to this button. Now there are two ways we can use the X on, use the click event and then just say, set that open variable to the opposite of whatever that is. So if it's false, it's going to be true. If it's true, it's going to be false. Now, instead of this X on column, we can use at sign here. And don't worry about this red text here. It's just VS Code doesn't recognize what it is. All right, so back to our website. If I click on it, we have the menu. If I click on it again, it disappears. Now, I also want to add a click outside event. So if I click outside, I want this menu to be closed. So we want to close this menu. We can use that click event again, and there is a modifier available and that is outside. We want to set the open to false when we click outside of this menu. That's it. So let's give it a try, open, close, and click outside, it's gone. Now let's actually show the user username instead of this hard-coded text. So we can use the double curly brackets in this p tag and use the auth helper function that will give us the authenticated user, then use the user helper function that will give us the user instance, and on that, we can grab the username or any property that we want. So I'm saying grab the username of the authenticated user. Now, if we click, we get the username, of course. So the next step is to create our dashboard view. If we go to our web, so far we've been rendering views using these views function. Now for the dashboard, because I want to have more functionalities in future, I want to use a controller. So we want to have a separate controller for users dashboard. So let's go back to our terminal and we want to make another controller. So we can just use the make 
controller command again and this time we want to call it dashboard controller okay so that would create the controller for us which is again under app http controllers right here now back to our web route we want to use that dashboard controller so let's create a route here that is going to be get and we want to pass dashboard for the uri and we want to use the controller for this so we already know how to do this we just have to pass the dashboard controller class here and the method that is going to handle this i'm going to call it index let's give this route a name as well so i'm going to call it dashboard all right so once again we are telling the index method inside dashboard controller is going to handle the get requests to this URI. So let's go back to our dashboard controller and create the function. We called it index and we are going to return a view. Remember in the very beginning when we created our app, we had a default route which returned a view for us. And this is again what we want to do. We want to return a view which it doesn't exist at the moment, but I want to create a users folder and within that folder I will have a dashboard view. All right, so let's create that. So under views, I'm going to create another folder called it users and a blade template called a dashboard.blade.php then i'm going to copy everything from the index page and paste it here now in here we don't need these directives because only authenticated users should have access to this page so we just want to add some text here maybe just say hello username so we can grab that auth helper function then user and username and also let's go back to layout now we have this dashboard link which is not going anywhere but we have the route now so we can just use the route helper function again and pass the dashboard route here now let's go back to our website and let's see if this works there we go we see hello john i also want to add the class title to this h1 so it is easier to see so this will take us to the last step and that is creating a log out button here now for the log out we don't want to have just the normal button we actually need to have a form and a proper post route because we want to protect our users from cross-site attacks so let's create a form here that is going to be a post form uh, we don't have a route for it yet so let's just leave it empty and the first step is to add that csrf token and all we want here is a button log out and i'm just going to add some classes so it would look the same as the dashboard button all right so this is our button let's check it out and there it is so this is our log out button now let's create the route for this so we want to go to the web.php under dashboard i'm going to create a route that is going to be post we could also copy one of these but let's just type it we want to go to forward slash logout and again the auth controller is going to be in charge so auth controller and we want to create a logout function let's also give it a name logout so of course we don't need any get method or any view for this one because it is just a button that is being rendered in our layout all right so now we need to create our logout function in auth controller so let's go there and right under login I'm going to create another comment and say log out user. Let's just create a function called log out. And again, let's just die and jump. Okay, so that's our function. Let's add it to our form or log out form. So we want to say route and log out. All right, let's test this out. And we want to go back to our website, press log out. We get that okay, which means it's working. Now all it's left is to add the functionality here. So this can be done using the auth facade again so we've been using it for log in in these two methods right so we also have a log out method on this one and that's all we have to do so we grab the auth facade and use this log out function and that would log out the user now laravel documentation recommends after logging out the user to invalidate the user session as well as regenerating the csrf token and that can be done using the request object so we need to accept it in our logout function and we have the session function available on that request and we can chain invalidate method to it so that will invalidate the user sessions and next we want to regenerate the csrf token again that is done through the request object and the session method and this method regenerate token so after all of this we want to redirect them back to the home page so let's just return a redirect to the home page so this is another way to redirect if you just want to pass the uri all right so let me make some comments here so it's clear what we are doing i just made some comments now let's test this out so of course we are logged in here because we see the text on the home page also we are able to go to our dashboard now let's press log out and we see the guest text we are back to the home page also the login and register links are back so this is working properly all right so that works let's log in again see how that works 
we are back to the home page and we see the text. A uh, better practice is to redirect the user back to the dashboard when they log in, since we have a dashboard now. So in our login function, we have this intended, right? And the default URI is homepage. We can just change that by passing dashboard here. So if we log in again, now we are back to dashboard. So that's a better practice. So that is about updating our nav and also adding the logout functionality. The next step is to protect some routes with middlewares because right now even though we are logged in we can still go to this page and if we log out and manually try to go to dashboard we get this error because we are trying to read the username of an authenticated user but the user is not authenticated we should not allow the user to go to this link so they should be redirected to the login page so let's see how we can do that